Sam Peckinpah, the director, not only contributed a great deal to film history with works such as The Wild Bunch and Straw Dogs, but he also led a pretty interesting life. Join Factsverse as we take a look at the insane true story of bloody Sam Peckinpah. The director of The Wild Bunch was truly wild. The Wild Bunch may be viewed as a classic western nowadays, but there was a time when it was incredibly controversial. It was directed by Sam Peckinpah and released in 1969. Though the film was a western, its themes were meant to hint at the horrors of the ongoing Vietnam War. Because of this, the film featured what was deemed to be some incredibly shocking violence for the time. The Wild Bunch wasn't Sam's first film, but it was his first major hit, and it has come to define the legendary director's career first and foremost. After all, it was the film that resulted in the director earning his nickname of Bloody Sam Peckinpah. Many consider him to be the last great Western director of his kind, though there was a great deal that set Sam apart from those who came before him. In addition to the graphic violence Sam was willing to show in his films, there was also the matter of fact that the director's production style was a whole new breed when compared to the old Hollywood styles of directors like John Ford. Ford's final Western was released in 1962, which left the ensuing decade open for someone to swoop in and make a name for themselves as the new pioneer of the genre, and Sam proved to be just that. It's not for nothing Peckinpah's directorial debut was released into theaters just two months after the release of The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. That featured the aged icons of John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart, and Sam's directorial debut featured some aged western icons of its own. His first feature was a western called Ride the High Country, and it featured Randolph Scott and Joel McRae in the leads. Ride the High Country featured many members of Peckinpah's posse. Other stars in Ride the High Country included the now recently deceased L.Q. Jones as well as Warren Oates. L.Q. had previously worked with Sam on the director's short-lived Western TV series The Westerner, and both L.Q. and Warren Oates would go on to work with Sam multiple times. Both actors appeared in The Wild Bunch. Both L.Q. Jones and Warren Oates are considered members of an informal group of actors who went by the name of Peckinpah's Posse. Other members include Chris Christopherson, Steve McQueen, and Dr. Strangelove's Slim Pickens. Ride the High Country was received well by critics and was nominated for three Academy Awards, but a studio exec who screened it claimed it was the worst American-made feature he'd ever seen. This was likely less because the studio executive didn't like the film and more because he didn't like Sam Peckinpah. Shortly after the picture was finished shooting, Sam was fired from his position at MGM where the movie had been filmed. The movie was then put into post-production without the director at the helm, though Sam was allegedly able to keep in contact with the film's editor and have some input on the final product under the radar. It seems the only aspect of post-production Sam wasn't able to control on his first film was the music, which is generally regarded as the worst part. Previous to Ride the High Country, he had actually been hired to direct a feature called The Deadly Companions. Sam was allegedly unhappy with the quality of the script and subsequently set about rewriting it. The producer told Sam he wasn't interested in the director's rewrites, which prompted Sam to have a bad attitude when filming started. Before filming finished, he was fired and wasn't given directorial credit. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Sam had a good deal of frontier heart. Sam Peckinpah was a Western filmmaker who seemed to have a good deal of frontier heart at his core. That heart was embedded in the actor as a result of his upbringing in the Sierra Nevada mountain range in California. Sam's family had a mountain in the high Sierras all to themselves, and it still is called Peckinpah Mountain to this day. Sam's grandfather used the many trees found on the mountain to develop a fortune in the lumber industry. That same grandfather also had a ranch. When young Sam wasn't riding his horse on Peckinpah Mountain, he was socializing with the cowboys on his grandfather's ranch. This gave the young boy an ear for perfect Western vernacular at an early age. Though Sam's grandfather was a pioneer, his father was a lawyer. His father was insistent on his son following in his footsteps, and was taken aback when Sam suggested he start up a career as a writer instead. Sam's insistence ended up winning out over his father, and the young man went on to study drama during his college years. Beforehand, however, Sam joined the Marines for a short period. That furthered his masculine sensibilities, as it was also during this time the future director picked up the bad habits of imbibing liquor and pursuing ladies of the night. Alcoholism plagued Sam for the remainder of his life, and it made it incredibly hard for the director to get along with his co-workers, whether they were actors or producers. Sam started in Hollywood as an assistant and eventually worked his way up to a writer, utilizing his ear for Western vernacular on the series Gunsmoke. That eventually led to him getting the opportunity to create his own series, The Westerner. Although it was short-lived, only 13 episodes, the show proved influential and brought the talents of Sam Peckinpah to more eyes than ever. Sam was a director with lots of integrity. 
After Ride the High Country and The Wild Bunch, he helmed the feature Major Dundee. As usual, Sam attempted to have as much control as possible over the feature before the producers were eventually forced to pull in the reins and finish the picture on their own. According to the producers, Sam put far too much work into the film. Not only did he overanalyze every aspect of production, but he also overshot. The film was going a significant amount over their budget, which forced the producers' hands in removing him from the picture. Yet again, he was removed from one of his directorial efforts before the film made it into the editing room. Sam Peckinpah had developed a reputation of being incredibly hard to work with. It was a miracle that allowed Sam to get the Wild Bunch made, and the director once again had some trouble getting his vision to the screen. Thankfully, Sam got the best of producers, who wanted to tone down the Wild Bunch as a result of the violence. The film ended up being released in the way Sam intended, and was a major success. Finally, he was able to prove to producers he knew what he was doing. While he had the occasional problem with them over his ensuing career, he commanded a great deal more respect after the Wild Bunch than he did before it. He went on to create brilliant and controversial masterpieces, like Straw Straw Dogs and The Getaway. Straw Dogs starred Dustin Hoffman and The Getaway starred Steve McQueen. Between the two, The Getaway was a bigger commercial success and Straw Dogs was a good deal more controversial, but both films featured more violence and grit than any viewer was likely to find elsewhere at the time. The End of Bloody Sam Peckinpah Sam Peckinpah is considered one of the most influential directors of his era, and not just because he pushed the boundaries in terms of violence. Bloody Sam Peckinpah ended up falling by the wayside in his Hollywood career before he died, with the Hollywood landscape changing to favor the polished blockbuster visions of filmmakers like Spielberg and George Lucas in the 80s. Sam passed away in 1984 after suffering from heart problems for numerous years. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite Peck and Paw movie? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So, if you want exclusive content from Facts First or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99.